They're almost impossible to play against. I mean, we've been denied a real title race this season, but I tell you what, this top four battle between Man United and Leicester over the next two games is going to be fascinating. Yeah, I mean, Leicester, it's a shame they've fallen. You know, the way they started the season, they probably overachieved and they probably deserve Champions League football, but United are right there. And if you look at the way Marcus Rashford played today, two world-class moments, just his dribbling to get out of his own half. And then Bruno Fernandes has is, is, is just been absolutely unbelievable. And Rio's right, Martial's a changed man. You know, he runs around, he's effective, he scores goals. And those three, they look for each other at all times. Pogba plays deeper. But those three are absolutely a breath of fresh air. They really are. Mm. OK, let's get some reaction then. Let's hear what Marcus Rashford has to say. He's with Des. Marcus, that's a, a huge three points, but some very close calls and tight margins tonight. Yeah, um, yeah so it's obviously every game for us now is a, a big game. Um, you know, before the Southampton game, we were scoring goals for fun. And then the um, Southampton game is a bit more difficult. And today the same, so... You know, these type of victories you get a lot out of as well as a team because we've had to work a double hard to get the results. A very surgical finish for a man who's going to be an honorary doctorate. I'll only do that joke once. But there's a fantastic cutback, took three players out as well. Yeah, um, just try and be uh, clever inside the box and, you know, try and find halfway out to get a shot off. But I think it's the pattern of play that we do before that's, um, that's positive, you know, it's what we've been improving on. And then, um, you know, it's the reason why we've scored so many goals in the last few games. Um, um, but, you know, it, it came early today, um, but the beginning of the game was, was very tough. And a couple of big moments, including the penalty appeal, yeah. Lindelof and, and Zaha coming together, that could have gone either way. Yeah, you know, with, with VAR, you don't really know what to, what to expect. Um, but, you know, we can only react to, to the decision that's made. And um, I think that's something for both teams. It can be difficult at times, um, but, you know, we'll, we'll improve it. We, we saw with their second goal how devastating it could be on the break. I mean, Anthony Martial hadn't had many mentions during the game, but suddenly he's there. Yeah, he's done a lot of work today, Anthony. And, you know, when we have the ball, he's always making himself an option and he's always available to, to receive the ball. So doing all that work, that's what he deserves at the end now to get a goal. And, you know, for the team, it's always good when you, when you strike a score. So well, now with that top four battle, I mean, we'd be saying this all the way through, but goal difference could even come into it. Yeah, I think for us, we've just got to uh, go and win every game. And then... Um, you know, that's been the goal for us for the for the past few weeks. Um, you know, we had a slip up last game against Southampton, but um, you know, today it's good to, to refocus and in you know, a very very tough game as well. So it's it's good to get the three points. Congratulations! Thanks Thank very you. much. Well played, Marcus. Well played, Man United. Let's just confirm the results, particularly from this evening. You can see there a really late blow for Aston Villa. Theo Walcott getting a late goal for Everton. It looked like Villa were going to start to drag themselves away from trouble, but it wasn't to be. Leicester with a big win against Sheffield United ahead of this one. Manchester United respond, and it finished. Southampton won, Brighton won as well. You'll see now it's a point that pretty much secures Brighton's place in the Premier League for next season, unless um, Bournemouth and Villa pick up huge wins in their last couple of games, and West Ham and Watford all also start winning. Crystal Palace, six defeats on the bounce. They remain 14th in the league. But it's at the top that it's really interesting now. Take a look at this. So we've got Leicester sitting on 62. Chelsea just ahead of them on 63. Manchester United on the same points as Leicester, but with a goal difference not quite as good. So it's two from three now with Wolves and Tottenham out of the race for those spots. Very interesting. But we're not just about the Premier League here. Someone enjoyed himself a great deal this evening. Um, it's time to talk about an incident that would not have pleased the Crystal Palace boss, though. He wouldn't have been clapping and hollering tonight. There was two moments, Peter, that I want to go through with you. First of all, I want to talk about this penalty incident from the first half. We spoke about it at half-time. All of the three gentlemen alongside me who all have played the game were very clear they thought it was a penalty. Now, whether you do or don't think it's a penalty... Isn't this a prime example of when you can ask the referee to go to the pitch side monitor, the technology exists, and just allow him to make a decision with more information than he originally had? Yes, yes it is. And, and uh, what the lawmakers have uh, come up with for next season, not this season, but for next season, is that they've written in the law to say when there's a subjective play such as that and the intensity of a foul challenge, it's down to the referee, if appropriate, to go over and have a look. And we'll see if the Premier League will adopt that the next year. It, as I say, it's been written into the law because the law of saying, it's, if we've got the technology there, why not use it? And in this instance, it's such a subjective play that had the referee had the extra angles that we see in here, then he may have swayed towards giving a penalty kick. As it was, he doesn't. He has the on-field de decision to make. And his decision was, no, it wasn't a, a foul. So... Yeah, uh, Crystal Palace can feel hard done by, 
but the lawmakers are looking to make sure that at least um, it's written to the law where appropriate he goes over to the screen for next season. But if you're a Crystal Palace fan, Robert, you're saying, well, the technology's there already, the screen's already by the side of the pitch. If you're planning on doing that, go and do it now. Yeah, I totally agree. And I've seen, as, as Darren Fletcher alluded to, the, the chairman's comments on social media about his, was VR broken tonight? And, you know, it took him ages to rule out Sackle's handball, didn't it, at Villa Park? But that's in the law. If it hits your arm, we know it's, it's, it's going to be disallowed if it leads to a goal or a goal scored by using your arm. And I think that law ch has changed on June the 1st, but it's not going to be implemented until next season in the Premier League. There, it's a subjective call. OK, it's not a clear and obvious foul, but it's a foul. It's a foul. The referee's got to go to the screens here. We keep saying it. I'm getting bored of talking about VR now. It's, it's a foul. It's a foul. Simple I think, as that. And, and I think so. But look, guys, I mean, when we played, anywhere else, we always say this, anywhere else on the pitch, that's a foul. But because it's in the box, yeah. it's foul. not given as a foul. It's, it's, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure uh, um, as Palace supporters, players, managers, staff, etc., They'll be livid with this decision because, they, again, if you look cool, that, that, that Rio, outside Rio, the yeah. box. Go on, Robbie. Rio, Rio, what I was going to say, is, and I'll ask Peter this, it's a tackle from behind. Mm. So he's gone through the player to win the ball. Peter, anywhere on the pitch, that is a foul. It's a tackle from behind. They're both running towards the goal. He's gone through the back of him, his leg and the ball. It's a foul, Pete. Simple. No excuse. Foul. Yeah, you... You, 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 you can argue that and I'm not disagreeing with no, you, it's a foul, you know, he has gone through the vacuum <laughs> he, has, he, he, has, he has caught his leg he's caught the ball as well and that's what Graham Scott's seen he's seen him catching the ball he hasn't seen what we've seen here now layer on top of that is that a clear and obvious foul I don't think it is yes. but you know that, that's of course my, it is my Peter do I, do I think it's, it's a, a foul do, do, do I think it's a foul do I think it's a foul? Yes, I do think it's a foul. However, if you lay on VAR there, it's got to be clear and obvious. And for me, it's not a clear and obvious foul, but it could be a foul. Slight difference of opinion, I Peter, think. Peter, if somebody <laughs> tackles you from behind... It's, it's a foul. On. If it's somebody a foul. tackles you yeah. from behind... If that was on the halfway line... Peter, if that was on the halfway line... Reels, reels marking a centre forward. The ball gets played to the centre forward. He goes through the back of the player, kicks the ball and the player at the same time. Is that a foul on the halfway line? Robbie, the difference the is a foul on the halfway line, but it's a foul on the county <laughs> area as well, Rob. <laughs> that was a foul. Well, there we go. Um, Owen, you're always the voice of reason. What do you think? It's a sort of, it's, a, it's two issues here. Number one, that it wasn't given, which would be frustrating, but also the fact that they've already decided they're not going to go to the pitch side monitor as often as they should. Why not just make each decision based on that particular incident? Well, there's a few issues with this. First of all, it is a clear and obvious foul. Second of all, if they were to give a penalty in the first decision, they wouldn't have overturned it. I think you do have to go to the monitor. Second of all, I think if you look at it, Lindelhoff's trying to play the ball, but Zaha does a step over while Lindelhoff's trying to reach for the ball. Yeah. When he does that step over and he's just over top of the ball, Lindelhoff basically takes him out. And look, Zaha falls over instantly. Yeah. You know, it's not a dive, he's, he's, he's just down. The point is, Victor yeah. thinks he's going to play the ball, and Zaha's trying to do a step over, and they come together at the same time. That stops Wilf going further forward and, and continuing the action. I think it's clear and obvious. I don't know how they missed it. And if, if you can't see yeah. it, go to the monitor. And I think it just makes it a lot easier. But look, you know, we've had issues with VAR. We're still learning. Uh, but I think United sometimes, you know, they got a bit of luck today. And the offside was marginal as well. But I think VAR, they got that one wrong. We'll talk about the offside in just a couple of moments. But Roy Hodgson is waiting to speak to Des. Let's hear this right away. Roy with Des. Let's get his thoughts. Well, I, I want to talk about the game, but I think I want to talk about the issues as well because there's, there's some very difficult decisions for you to take tonight. Yes, I think the most difficult thing to take is to have played so well and once again lost the game. Because I thought if I ignore the last 10 minutes when Patrick Van Arnholtz had to go off and we've had to readjust, up to that point I thought we played really well. I thought that if anything, you know, we we could so easily have been leading in the game and to once again find ourselves on the wrong end of a, a result after a performance like that against a team of Man United's quality is very, very hard to take, especially since you rightly say there were a couple of issues that really could so easily have gone our way but didn't. You're very supportive of referees, I know, but 
the penalty call? What did you make of it? Well, referees, referees these days, you never see them because they're, they're miles away, aren't they? Um, I thought that the referee on the field could easily have given the penalty. He didn't, but then the people in the, in the office somewhere in, in, in Hounslow they decided it against that one as well. And then apparently the other one is one of those hair-fine decisions which one finds hard to take, especially because one is used really from football without VAR that when a ball is crossed along the six-yard line and someone slides into the back post and scores, I don't remember those goals ever being ruled out for offside, but now we have to come to terms with that new reality that, that you, you're celebrating, you think you've scored a good goal, one that we you know, have tried so hard to score that type of goal, and then you have it taken away from you by some, by some hair fine decision. But the important thing for me tonight was that we played so well, that, that, that's good after a performance on Saturday that, or Sunday that I wasn't so pleased with. But it's tough for the players. I feel really sorry for them tonight because if there was ever a game where I should be standing here congratulating them on A, the performance and B, the result, tonight was the night. I hate going back to it, but with such a tight calibration for something like offside, then you have a penalty call, a subjective penalty call. Wouldn't it be sensible for the referee to go and watch it himself on the screen and give himself a second chance? <laughs> Maybe. I must say that I'm still finding it very hard to come to terms with it all. I think that it's not, it's not helping my feeling either during the game or after the game, having to stand here and talk about these type of things. Um, I'm bitterly disappointed tonight to see the team do as well as it's done and once again had another, another defeat to a, a growing list of defeats because that was something we really didn't deserve. And, Having to come to terms with something that you really don't deserve is always very, very difficult. You've got support in the boardroom because the chairman, Steve Parrish, tweeted out during the game that he asked, is VAR broken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, VAR's there and, you know, I'm not going to join that growing list of people who, after every game, wants to talk about whether it was right or whether it was wrong. Of course, we feel a bit hard done by at the moment with regard to VAR decisions. But the important thing for me tonight, we're playing a top team here, a team that's come here with an incredible string of results behind them. And like Southampton uh, at Man United in the previous game, I thought that we showed we were more than a match for them in every department, quite frankly, except that you know the one or two chances that came their way, they put them away, whereas of the 13 or 14 opportunities we had, we weren't able to put them away. And when we did, it was ruled out for a marginal offside. Well done tonight, Roy. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I think we all feel for Roy Hodgson this evening to come into this game against Manchester United. Five defeats on the bounce coming into this and then to play that well and come away with nothing, in part, not entirely, but in part because of some decisions. We do need to talk about is this offside. Now, we know, because of the frame rates of the television cameras, that the offside, when it is that marginal, there has to be some allowance for error because of the frame rate, exactly when the ball was touched by the, by the player that played the ball. Yet we don't allow for that. We don't allow for any clear and obvious. We don't allow for a margin of error. We, we say it's either on or off. Is that something that needs to change as well going forwards? So you're quite right. So that um, you know, offside is a factual. You're either onside or you're offside. What the lawmakers haven't allowed is this margin of error in the calibration of the TV cameras on any given game. I think uh, the TV cameras used tonight were 50 frames per second. Well, if you had something to run at 100 frames per second, you get a, a better definition. So I do think there is um, a, a way forward in terms of looking for a margin of error so that the offside becomes clear and obvious again. So you build in that margin of error uh, to indicate that the player is offside. Mm. When VAR was first thought of, these marginal decisions were not in the lawmakers' uh, minds. The lawmakers were looking to get the hand of God out of the game. They were looking for, for clear and obvious errors from the match decision makers, not these marginal calls that we see you know, week in, week out with offside. So the lawmakers will be looking at this as they are at the moment in terms of building in that margin of error in order to make sure that we don't have a toenail offside and a goal uh, disallowed. It needs to happen. I mean, you could see on one of the angles there, the ball was blurred because it's moving and the camera can't keep up with it. And in cricket, <laughs> they use cameras that are hundreds of frames a second, not 50. But this is why, I'll be honest, I'll go back to when VAR was first mentioned and first introduced. I was one of the people that was saying, listen, leave it to human error. Leave it to, that creates a debate that we're, we'd have around tables like this 
uh, or in pubs or in homes in front rooms across the world and let that human error stay a part of the game because that was a, a part that we all loved. Sometimes he was on the wrong end of it, but sometimes he wasn't. Unless it's absolutely 100%, then why have VAR? Unless it's absolutely concrete, why have it? Because it's, it's, they're still well, going to have be it, but allow the margin for error. Yeah, but it's still not going to be concrete. It's still like you still have to, a human's eyes have to go over it and say, actually, I, I believe it's this way or that way. Unless it's completely a black and white, why have it? I don't understand. It's, it's just, it's, I get why they, they want it, but it's, it's just the human error for me was part of the game. It was part of it. A referee was a part of the game. Now, yeah. You don't, the referees have no identity now. The referee is behind the screen somewhere else in a different location. The good news is we're on to half 11. Robbie's clearly had lots of coffee this evening, so he's going to be just fine when we're still on air <laughs> almost at midnight. Um, look, there's one other game that, that I want to go to, Robbie. You were there for a very short amount of time, but I know that we all think they're a brilliantly run club, Brighton. They've secured their place pretty much in the Premier